Heroes of Might and Magic is a series of mainly turn-based strategy games for the PC, and it's one that I spent quite a bit of time with back in the late 90s. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 in particular kept me busy hour after hour as I collected resources, developed towns and assembled heroes and armies to take into battle against my foes. When I learned of the release of Quest for the Dragonbone staff for the PS2, I was eager to get my hands on a new Heroes of Might and Magic game, especially as my PC was never going to be powerful enough to run Heroes of Might and Magic 4. Not to mention the fact that this Heroes game had fully 3D rendered graphics, marking a significant departure from the traditional 2D design of its predecessors. From the outset you choose to play as either a sorceress, paladin, barbarian or knight, with the main difference between the classes relating to leadership strength, starting gold and weekly commission. Once you select your character you're treated to a cutscene of an old man warning against your intention to banish a dragon from the land and stating that the only way to defeat the dragon is to obtain the titular Dragonbone Staff. You plan the demise of the great dragon Malazek. I too was once blinded by this ambition. Sent great men to their deaths, no hope for glory. And thus, with the king gravely ill, you set out from the queen's castle with some of her troops by your side and begin the search for the staff. The differences between this PS2 Heroes game and its PC counterparts become immediately clear as the turn-based gameplay of the originals is nowhere to be found here. Instead, you can move freely around the land, however, you're told from the outset that you have only 600 days to find the staff, and as you're constantly reminded of each passing day, you won't want to waste a single second of gameplay time. In a similar vein to the PC games, you'll find treasure around the levels, but these usually boil down to gold that can be either kept for yourself or distributed amongst the peasants to increase your leadership level. Whereas the PC games would have you collecting all manner of resources from gems to wood and stone in order to develop your towns, Quest for the Dragonbone Staff is focused solely on buying and building your troops. You'll need to keep increasing your leadership level to allow you obtain greater numbers of each warrior, so it's a good idea to prioritise building up this stat over going for gold when you're given the option. When it's time to take your army into battle, the gameplay reverts to the familiar hero's formula. You take turns to move your soldiers around a grid-based combat area in order to position them for attack, and you can make use of magic spells like fireballs and lightning bolts to give yourself an edge in battle. It's here that the 3D graphics really shine, and I remember being genuinely intrigued at the time to see the soldiers and monsters from the 2D games rendered in this way. As with all Heroes games, you'll want to have a good mix of close combat and ranged attacks, as well as sufficient troop numbers to make sure you come out on top. As for actually tracking down the Dragonbone Staff itself, you do this by defeating villains who are hiding in castles throughout the land. You can visit small villages to buy spells, rent boats that help you navigate the different islands and continents, and obtain contracts and information on the different villains. After defeating each villain, a previously hidden square is revealed on a map that will guide you to the hiding place of the Dragonbone Staff. Other squares on the map can also be revealed by finding specific artefacts scattered around the world. It's a satisfying gameplay loop that requires repeated exploration and gold acquisition to ensure that you keep your army strong enough to take on the ever-increasing challenges being thrown at you. However, when you begin to draw comparisons to the original Heroes games on PC, it's obvious that a lot of features and elements of the Heroes formula have been simplified or removed entirely. Sorceress has gained a level. However, there's still a fun game to be had here, and Quest for the Dragonbone Staff does manage to provide that addictive Heroes gameplay that's as oddly therapeutic as it is devastating when a battle doesn't go your way. You have lost the battle. Thanks so much for watching, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll be back next week with another video from the Random Game Room.